Hello, I'm Rachel, the Messy Minimalist. I want to talk to you guys about the biggest roadblock that I've had thus far in my minimalism journey. We are now over the six month hump. I have thought about this and it's definitely been an ongoing theme that keeps on coming up, but now I'm sure of it. This is the biggest roadblock that I've had. It's something I've even said before. You might have heard me talk about it. I call it decision paralysis. I am having hardcore decision paralysis. It's more commonly thought of as decision fatigue, which is something that oftentimes in the workplace you might have heard, or if you've been reading a blog post somewhere out there about how to get a good start on your day, you probably have heard the term decision fatigue. This is like what happens after you've pushed yourself beyond decision fatigue and you've just gone into full out paralysis. I'll kind of explain what decision fatigue is for anybody out there who is unaware of the term. I'm kind of paraphrasing this like always, I'm sure you could go Google it and find a better definition that is more succinct than mine. But basically decision fatigue is when you get tired of making decisions. It's when your brain has made too many decisions in a day or a given period of time and it is just tired. Whether or not you're a morning person, the morning still tends to be a really good time for the human brain. You've just had a good night's sleep or really any sleep at all. You're just functioning at a slightly higher capacity. Well, the theory of decision fatigue is that you only have so much RAM, if you think of it that way. There's only so much brain power that you can use. So if you think of it as like 100% brain power, you get up and you make your first decision of the day. Your decision might be if I'm gonna make my bed or not. Eh, should I make my bed? Yeah. Boop. You've lost a little bit of your decision-making power. Then you decide, what am I gonna wear today? Mm, that. No, wait. Nah, that. The point being, if you have to make that decision, bloop, you have a little bit less decision-making power. And then every decision past that, what am I gonna eat? Bloop. I don't know, what shoes am I gonna wear? Bloop. Am I gonna send this email out now or am I gonna wait till I get to the office? Bloop. And there's probably bigger decisions. You know, some people might have to make a much bigger decision like, well, I don't know, whatever it is. Eventually, you are gonna run out of capacity. You've got your decisions you have to make your decision-making power goes down. Eventually you get to this point where like you were at 100% here, you're down here at like 20%. You have decision fatigue. So it's the end of your day, you've spent all day making decisions. Some of your early brain power might have been wasted on really menial decisions. For instance, you might have wasted that really good juicy brain power in the morning on what to eat for breakfast. Cheerios or Rice Krispies? Think about that. Even if it seems like an easy choice, a split second decision, that's still a little bit of brain power that you used to make that decision. The idea is, is that after you've made enough decisions in a day, you just get tired of making decisions. You're down to here and you're tired. That's why at one o'clock we feel a lull or four o'clock we feel a lull. We're tired of making decisions, even easy decisions. They all use up some sort of brain power. So that would be decision fatigue right about here, but you still typically power through or you call it a day and you go watch some TV, veg out, read a book, whatever your thing is. <laughs> I'm so far past decision fatigue at this point. Sure, every day I kind of like reset myself, but I'm still burning through those decisions. Anyone else who's doing this decluttering, minimalizing journey, you might also be burning through decisions too. In a typical day, maybe you make 50 decisions or however many. Maybe you have the brain capacity to make all those decisions. But when you're going through, for instance, a decluttering journey or a purging journey, minimalizing journey, whatever you want to call it, if you're actively getting rid of things, that is a decision for every single item that you get rid of. And on top of that, it might not just be, do I keep or do I not keep? Does it spark joy or does it not? Maybe it's not that easy. Maybe, for instance, part of what's causing my fatigue and ultimately my paralysis, I'm like, okay, do I love it or not? Yes, I love it. Okay, keep. No, I don't love it. Is this trash? Is this donate? Is this recycle? Metal scrapping? Is this what is this stuff and what do I do with it? And then on top of that, there's the whole other set of questions and decisions I have to make, such as, is this donate? Could somebody get use out of this? Sure, somebody could get use out of this iron. Great. 
but will the donation center take it? I get stuff that's rejected all the time. And on top of that, even if it's not rejected, I have the question that goes on in my brain. Are they going to actually put this on a shelf and hopefully allow somebody to use it or buy it? Or are they going to pitch it and have it end up in a landfill? In which case, I would have rather held on to it and try to find somebody who needed it so it wouldn't end up in a landfill. These all seem like completely useless questions and probably are boring you guys to death, but these are the things that are going on in my brain every time I make a decision about whether to keep an item or not keep an item. So, you can imagine that one item that I pick up, for instance, patching plaster. <laughs> like, just for example, because it was sitting right next to me. I'm gonna look at this and say, like, do I want to keep this? Yes, this is actually something that we use. It's a tool that probably does for once belong here in the garage. Is it in its right place? No. So, decision one, do I want to keep it? Yes. Decision two, does it belong where it was sitting? No. Decision three, where do I put it? Probably somewhere over there where the rest of the tools are. Decision four, before I put it there, do I even know if it's still good? Because it would be useless to put this somewhere ugh, when it's not even good anymore. So I'm gonna look. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's good. Okay, you get the picture. I just used up a little bit of my brain capacity to make a decision about a stupid bottle of patching plaster. I guess now I owe it to you guys to actually go put this away where it belongs. Hold on. <sighs> okay, so you get the idea. I'm experiencing some decision fatigue and what I further feel is decision paralysis because I've been making decisions on a daily basis for over six months. And I don't regret it, but it's been really difficult. I'm not here to moan and complain about all of this. I'm just really stating a fact that this has been my biggest roadblock and really to this moment in this exact point in time is my biggest roadblock and I'm having a lot of trouble getting over it despite how many times I have taken extra breaks. I've even gone a few weeks in between like in the past couple of videos I've done every two weeks instead of every week. It's in part because I'm feeling paralyzed, unable to make decisions about stuff and it bugs me because I'm like no I can do better. I can do this but at the same time it's just been hard. So I am once again kind of sucking it up. I'm just trying to push through because I feel like maybe part of the fatigue and the paralysis is when you look at a space that you've already been in, like the garage, and you see it get cluttered back up with stuff because I don't even know why. It gets cluttered up with stuff again and it just feels like you're not making progress so the momentum is gone and the fatigue is up. It's just overall not a fun situation. It's not fun at all. The only part of it that's fun is that I know that there's a future of me parking my car in the garage where I'm not constantly tripping over things, losing things. It's still smells like a dead animal in here. I can't find the dead animal, but I smell it and it's somewhere like back yonder. <laughs> These are all things that are, like it or not, ticking around in the back of my brain and I just know that I gotta power through it. So I'm gonna try to make some more decisions. <laughs> Hopefully we can get past this stage. You've gotta be done watching me clear out junk from the garage. It's time to make it a usable space. So to heck with decision fatigue and decision paralysis, I rip refuse to believe that this is going to control my life for the rest of my minimalism journey. I'm going to get over it and what better way than to just power through it. Here we go.
mouse food. It says mouse and young rat food. We haven't had a rodent in like eight years. Either we've been carrying this around for eight years or somehow this strangely made it into our house. We had guinea pigs. Ugh, this is like blowing my mind because I have no idea why I have this. So, great. <laughs> Yet another thing that's been taking up precious space that is completely unnecessary. I'm so glad to be getting this junk out of here. I guess it is finally time for me to talk about some of the stuff that I just pulled off of that shelf. I don't even know what you would call that. That wasn't even a junk shelf. I can't even say that I've recently put anything there. It's just kind of been there. So it's finally time for me to get it cleared off. And the goal here is that we're actually taking that entire shelving unit out. It's like an old cabinet and we do not need that. Some of the stuff I will admit, a couple of the things are things that I've seen and looked at in some of my past garage cleanouts, and I chose to keep. And yet here I am weeks later God, months later even, and I've realized that I haven't done anything with them. And so if I wanted to keep them at one point, but I haven't done anything with them now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go on a limb and say, you know what, I didn't really want it that badly because I would have done something with it. I'm going through and I'm getting rid of all of this stuff that I thought I wanted to keep and I don't. They're super charming. Battery powered candles that will automatically go on at night. So in theory, you could just have these hanging outside and they would illuminate the night. These things are gonna go, even though they're adorable. Welcome. Uh, I don't know. So many American flags. I specifically kept this one when I did a clean out of like five other flags because it was in such great shape. And then 4th of July came and I never put it out. So I feel like if I can't even put out an American flag on the 4th of July, then I really don't need to be keeping this thing around. So I am getting rid of it. Um. Every time I try to get rid of this, I can't. It's like, I even put this in my get rid of pile and I'm just gonna admit like I'm looking at it now and I'm like, no, I can't get rid of it. It's perfect for one stem of flower, but it's just like a vintage glass vase. Why can't I get rid of this? Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. No, I mean, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. These are 200 little pouches that I have no use for, that I don't really know why I have them. Yeah. And then just more stuff. I have just infinite amount of garbage, or not like a Freudian slip. I'm trying to say garden stuff and then my mouth said garbage stuff. Clearly I secretly deep down feel like these things are just garbage. I will be donating them, planter and holder upper things for flowers or plants or like put a little card in it. I don't know, I don't need it. This is like my weird bizarro land pipe dream of having the cutest gardenscape ever, but I'm not gonna have it. I have no time for it. So all this garden stuff I'm getting rid of. 
found another one of these things. It's like for a picnic, you stick it over your plate and it keeps bugs and things like that off of the picnic food. I keep on holding on to because I'm like, oh, it's so cute. Next time I have a picnic, we're gonna use this. But I have had probably five picnics, have not used this. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Yeah. Maybe this is also a good opportunity to talk about some of the other stuff that I just pulled out of there. I pulled a bunch of lamps out of here. I'm honestly not sure why we were keeping all those lamps, but we had a bunch of lamps and I'm just, they're gone. So do not need them, being donated and we're good. Moving on. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I feel like at least we got a bunch more stuff out. I've got a bunch more stuff to go as usual, but we are making progress and I refuse to believe that I will be paralyzed for the rest of my life. My decision-making capabilities are there. I just need to keep going. So do you. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you will follow along on my social media where I continue to post on a much more regular basis than I do here with my videos. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm not here to complain. Oh, I should edit that out. We don't swear in these videos. What? This has a hole in the side, and it looks suspiciously like this has been shotgunned. Why would there be a hole right there if not have been shotgunned? Which is very strange. If it were a beer, it'd make total sense, but it's just a cherry cola. Oh my god, go away, bugs. <laughs> go away.